it's like normal for me um and i went to school and um on the way back from school my mum had picked me up and we was in the car and um i think the radio was on and like the news had come on and it was like um like i think it was i think it was something like the man who um because obviously at this point everyone still thought it was road rage so mm -hmm. it was something like the man who was involved in the road rage um has been named as lee harvey mm -hmm. and obviously i clocked my dad's name and i turned around to my mum and i was like that's my dad's name and um my mum took me into the house then and and she obviously said that um you know daddy's gone to heaven um but at that point i didn't really know anything um and I was, I don't think I was, I think even when it was Tracy, I don't think I was actually told that it was her. I think it was, um, I just thought that like, obviously some bad people had, um, had done something and, um, and yeah, that, that's what, and then obviously I used to see them, like my mum would watch like the news and, and the stuff like that that was on. And I obviously used to, I used to see that then. Yeah. Um, but like, it it it, it was difficult because obviously my mum was trying to keep things normal for me, and she used to send me to school and stuff. But like reporters and stuff would would turn up outside the house, and my mum used to have to get like her friend over the road to like take me out of the back gate to get to school so that no pictures was taken or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's only as I really got a little bit older that I started to understand a little bit more of what actually happened was there like an age where you like literally sat down and thought i want to know everything like i need to know exactly what happened um yeah and i think my nan's been that person um that's that's really told me a lot um she's been the one that's like told me everything you know she saved all the the newspaper articles and stuff from from back then and she showed me things and she's told me things so um i think as i've got older um obviously i've wanted to know exactly what has happened and have you um have you ever had contact with tracy or tracy's daughter again um so i got in contact with carla um when i had my first uh my first son um, me and Carla yeah. were both pregnant at the same time and I got in contact with her and I sent her a message on Facebook and she was like oh my god is this really you um and we started talking and she was fine with me like you know she was happy to speak to me and you know we was just talking and you know it was fine and then like I think two years later I had my second child and she was pregnant at the same time as me so we was kind of like <laughs> messaging each other about like our pregnancy and stuff like that um and then it was only really like probably a good I don't know maybe about five years probably a bit longer about eight years maybe um that all of a sudden she just cut contact with me um and she didn't she, she wouldn't she wouldn't respond to me um but i did write a letter to try and say um and i have taught i did tell carla at the time when i was talking to her um that you know i would like to speak to her mom um and i think carla just said like you know my mom's not my mom's not ready but if if she ever was um you know she would get in touch with you um but no i think i think i found her on facebook um and I did send a message, this was a few years ago now, but I've never had a reply back. Okay. Do you, um, did she ever reach out to your nan and granddad or anyone? Did she ever like apologise at all? No. Or she's always blamed him? No, she's never. She's right, never, okay. She's never um, tried to get in contact with anybody. She has got like a 25 mile radius. She isn't allowed to come within Birmingham. So, um, okay. But I think all her family afterwards, I think they all upped and left and moved to Cornwall. And I think that's why she then got put in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how do you like, I know it's a weird question because it's your dad, but how do you feel about Tracy Andrews today? Like when she was released, for instance, how did you feel about that? Um, it was, 
obviously we got told that she was coming out and you know um the day that she came out it was just a bit like well that's it like she's she's done her time now that's it she's out and she can live her life um but it's I personally, you know, obviously, I, this isn't the same for the rest of my family. Um, but I personally don't feel any hate. Okay. Not obviously, I hate, I hate what she's done. I hate like the fact that I'm never going to have a dad. Um, but if I sit and spend the rest of my life mm -hmm. hating her, you know, I'm just gonna like, what life's that going to be for me? What life's that going to be for my children? Um, yeah like i've kind of like don't get me wrong it's like it's had a massive effect on my life um you know i've got major anxiety um you know like it's it, it has it has been hard and there's been there's been times in in my life that you know my dad's missed out on like having mm -hmm. grandchildren like she's got to have she's got to see her grandchildren um she'll get to see her daughter get married like that's something that my dad never ever got to see and he never even got to see me grow up either um yeah. but i can't i can't sit and spend the rest of my life because i've seen what it's done to my nan and i've yeah. seen the effect it's had on my nan and i know i just can't i can't let that be i can't let that be me because i know i know what it i know what it would do to me and i just i have to try and you know move forward and I think that's what your dad would want. Your dad would not want you to be consumed by anger that you can't change. Like, yeah. the best thing you could do is, like, put all that into loving your dad and, like, introducing your children to who he was and things like that. So I don't know if I could do it, but I'd literally take my hat off to you for being able to do that. It's amazing. Obviously, like, I, you know, I, I just... Maybe not, I don't hate her, because I do, I do hate her. I just yeah, don't yeah. feel anything towards her. I don't... Yeah. I'm not going to put any of my feelings or whatever in, in, in towards, into her because she's not worth it, um, you know, and, and she's took enough from my life. I'm not going to let her take the rest of my life. No, 100%. Like, literally, it's amazing that you can do that. It's amazing that you can, obviously, once you have children, you like literally want to be whole for them as well. So spending your time consumed by something. Do you feel like a certain kind of way of like, Tracy, like when she came out and when she kind of got married, like thinking like, how dare you move on and have that when you've taken that from my dad kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so like, obviously when she came out, um, it was it was all over the, the papers and stuff that she'd been released. And I think towards the end of her sentence, she was um, in an open prison. So she was allowed to come out. I think she had a job like volunteering. I think it might have been in like a cafe or something. Um, so like, that was getting pictured like she was being spotted out going shopping with her friends and stuff. And, you know, that would get plastered all over the paper. Um, and then like she had her surgery for her jaw, mm -hmm. which obviously, you know, was paid for by the taxpayers. Um, and then obviously she's came out and I think she went a bit quiet for for a while. Um, and then I think it was in 2017, I think it was, um, she was spotted in Butlins in Minard. Right. And she was there on a hender and she was dressed up as like a police officer. Um, mm -hmm. And she went, she went there and she was there that weekend and i was going the weekend after oh god yeah the exact same place i was going there the weekend after um and then obviously that had came out and um i think somebody got in touch with me i think by email to say like oh you know um have you seen that tracy's been out on a hender and she's getting married and whatever and i was like yeah i've seen it um you know it's a disgrace and, and whatever else um and that was it really and then on father's day there was um there was like a paper something in the paper about tracy and like they literally took everything i'd said in that email and put it into a story 
which I I obviously didn't consent to. Um, yeah. And like, you know, the posted pictures of me, the posted pictures of, um, I think it was me and, me and my husband and they mentioned my children's names as well. My um, as well. Yeah, and like, I was fuming. I was like, you know, post what you like about me, but you've just mentioned all my kids. So, so. Yeah. and then obviously she then went, she went and got married and she was, um, she was all in the in the papers on her wedding day um and i believe that she she knew that i think like people were there taking pictures i think yeah. um, i think she likes the the attention yeah yeah do you do you um what your life now how is your life now um yeah my life's my life's perfect um mm -hmm. It, it's just me like I've, I've just I just have like really really bad um obviously anxiety mm -hmm. um you know de there's been depression um I'm waiting for um like a potential PTSD um mm -hmm. diagnosis um and I, I think I suffer really badly with health anxiety as well which I think is is brought on from that yeah, I can imagine uh, that. So yeah, other than that, I'm I'm okay. okay one second. Uh, yeah. Okay, love you. No, no. Sorry, my little one coming say good night. Um, does anyone in the? It is any. Do you mind answering questions? Obviously, I'll only. I'll, I'll, we can only pick ones that are nice. Obviously, I'm, they'll be blocked if they're not. Does anyone have any questions for Danielle that I haven't asked? Danielle was five when it happened. She answered that one before you came in. Are your nan and granddad still alive? They are, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did she ever say why her reason was? No, T so she's never she's never actually just admitted that she like did it. She said that she was self defence and she lied before that, so she's never really taken any accountability for what happened. There's a lot of people that just want to just tell you that your dad would be really proud of you. Um if you could get the chance to meet Tracy and sit down with her, would you do it? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Um, you not that I think I'd get any truth from it because she obviously lied then, you know, what's to say that she's going to tell the truth now. Um, I feel like she's kind of moved on with her life now and I think that's how she wants it to stay. Um, so I don't, I don't think she'd give me any... Yeah. Anything different? I don't think she's probably ever admitted to anybody really, because um, I know I think most of her family moved to Cornwall. I don't think she's got apart from Carla. Carla still lives around here. Um, I don't think she has any other family around here. I know her mum died a couple of years ago. Right. Okay. Um, and I think her dad died before before that. I think her dad died when she was in prison. Um, so I think she's just got like brothers and sisters left here, and, well, in Cornwall now. Okay, can I just ask, I don't know if you even know this, it's a weird question, but her ex that she had car, um, her baby, her daughter with, did he report any kind of like weird behaviour from her? Because it's obviously she's she was one of the worst females I've ever seen that have commit this kind of crime. I think he did, yeah. I think afterwards, I think quite a few exes came out and said, <laughs> you know, she did this to me, she did that to me. Um, Obviously, she, she, you know, she was violent to ex-partners, um, and obviously, she was even in the run-up to this. She was, uh, she was violent to my dad. Like, you know, he'd go back to my nan and granddad's. Um, he'd pack his stuff and be like, "It's over. I'm going." And he'd go back to my nan and granddad's, and you know, he'd have bruises. Um, he'd have bite marks, and yeah, every time my nan and granddad would say, like, you know just finish it now you can't go back you can't go back and then he'd end up going back because you know he said well i love her and i want to be with her so he used to go back um and she she did get pregnant um she did get pregnant by my dad and i think she was about 16 weeks and she um she had an abortion and she told my dad that she fell down some stairs in the shopping center um oh 
But, like, yeah, after that, like, she was kind of saying, well, like, you know, she feels really, like, low and stuff about herself. And then my dad paid for her to have um, a boob job. Yeah, I um, that, yeah. yeah, and she was just... I, I, I don't think... I don't think my family really liked her, but they just got on with her for the sake of my dad. Um, yeah, did, someone said, did you ever speak about what actually happened that day with Lee's daughter? Did you ever kind of, did she ever like kind of give you any kind of closure like that she knew her mum had done it or any of that or just not at all? Um, not really. Little bits. Because, um, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I guess it's hard for her as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, because I suppose that's her mum and she probably got a lot of hate and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I never I never had anything wrong. I, I had no problem with Carla. Um, yeah. You know, we used to get on and we used to talk and whatever. And the one day she just cut, cut contact with me. I don't know whether that was because Tracy had said, like, stop speaking to her. I don't know. I suppose it would probably be awkward for Carla because she was talking to me and she was still seeing her mum and speaking to her mum. Yeah, definitely. I can. Do you think she, like, when it got close to her mum getting out, perhaps she cut contact because she knew that she was going to have to make a choice soon? When I was talking to her, her mum was in prison. Yeah. Yeah, so... Is someone said, is Carla the same age as you? She was a year older. A year older, right, okay. Yeah. Um, Jenny said, is there anything we can do to help support you? Like, is there something you're trying to do in your dad's name? Is there something like you hope to do in the future with this? So like, what can we do to help? Um, I have thought about, um, obviously things like, um, you know, like maybe volunteering for like victim support or okay. some I think that's why I went into the prison service um because I thought I could kind of make a difference and make a change um but it was a lot harder than I than I expected um and I think anxiety just got the better of me um yeah. you know you have to go in there and you have to kind of forget what they've done and you're there to do a job okay. Um, and I kind of thought that that was going to be like my, um, yeah, uh, it's like my, that was going to be like my, like, yeah, I get, I'm trying yeah. to figure the word. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've worked, I've worked in Dartmoor prison. Um, I've worked in the education department there and it is, it is, I could, did you like, it must've been hard because obviously I worked down in Dartmouth prison, but in the education department, but did you ever like, obviously you went in there hoping it would kind of like be in medicine for you and help you to heal. But did you ever feel like a certain way, like you were just surrounded by people like Tracy? Yeah. Must've been really yeah, hard. And like, obviously you're there and you're like, you see firsthand what, you know, what happens, what goes on. And um, I'm guessing all prisons are the same. I was in a men's prison, a cat bay men's prison. Um, and you know, they're not, Apart from being, well, I, I started when it was locked down, so there was locked, there was actually locked in their cell for mm -hmm. the majority of the time. Um, but obviously when all the restrictions started to be lifted, um, you know, you actually see what what they, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it's prison, yeah, but it's not, it's yeah. not like, you know, to some it's, to some it's a holiday, to some it's their home. Because they've got yeah. nowhere to live when they're on the when they're on the streets, um, but yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Okay. Someone said, "How did Tracy treat you when you were with your dad on the weekend? Do you remember any of that? Do you remember her at all?" I do. I do remember her. Yeah. Um, I think I do remember um, quite vividly when I went and stayed. Me and Carla was in um, her bedroom and we was watching Thumbelina. Um, and we could hear arguing from the living room and me and Carla used to put like the pillow over our head to kind of drown out the sound. Um, and I think like towards towards the end, um, my, um, like they used to drop me home back to my mum and she would, um, my dad said to me, um, give Tracy, like as I got out of the car, give Tracy a kiss. And I just, I, I remember not wanting to kiss her. I was like, really hesitant to give her a kiss. 
Um, so I don't know. Everyone says I think children know. Um, yeah. I, I I don't know. The, the, I think something must have clicked in me that you know she's not. Maybe she's not a nice person. Um, but she did. She did stop my dad from dropping me home. Um, as well towards the end, or she'd go with him because she didn't right. trust. Um, she didn't trust him around my mum. Right, okay. She got oh. jealous, and she she'd say, "No, I'm taking her home." Right, okay. So, did is your how was your mum feel about this? So obviously, she loved your dad at one stage. You share a child together, and she was left with like you as a kid to like deal with that trauma for you. So, how 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 was your mum? Because I bet people don't ask that a lot because obviously they weren't together at the time. Yeah, well, my mum used to um, Tracy used to. Phone my mum and my mum and my dad and Tracy had had an argument. Tracy used to then phone my mum and like be telling my mum like what's been going on and what's happened. So my mum and Tracy what? didn't really have um, like a problem with each other. Um, yeah. And obviously it, when it happened, everybody felt sorry for Tracy and they believed that they was looking for these two men. Um, mm -hmm. And I think obviously it was it was hard for my mum because. You know, she'd then been left with me and all the, like, the aftermath of what had gone on. And, um, you know, I think my mum had to start working because um, it just all became too much for her. Um, but my mum did, um, when I was six, my mum my mom did meet somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. And... When I was six, my mum had, um, so I think it's like the year after, my mum had my brother um, mm -hmm. and my mum got married again and um, I've got a sister as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously my stepdad brought me up from the age of six um, and then he passed away suddenly eight years ago and he was only 44. I'm so, so sorry. It was like... Um, it was like history repeating itself just in a different way um and because obviously i'd i'd spent longer with my stepdad i actually felt i actually felt that grief more um i don't think i don't think i've ever grieved for my dad i don't think i've ever been able to um i think i was too young at the time to um to remember and to know exactly what was going on and then obviously I've grown up and I've been told what's happened and I don't think I've actually had I don't think I've actually been able to grieve properly no definitely it, it, it does sound like um it may be some PTSD obviously when you lose your dad at such a long age normally you get like you deal with it at that developmental age and so now you'll learn all this new information you're still kind of stuck as a little girl who lost and your I'm dad left with, I'm left with um like I don't have closure. Yeah. Because for me, I I want to know, I want to see Tracy, I want to ask her why. Um, you know, it may not be full closure. Um, but for me I think it would make me feel a little bit Yeah. Just to know why, like but then again at the same time I don't think she she'd ever tell and I, I don't think I'd be able to believe what she was saying anyway. Just write this down because I literally I do have um I do have some kind of connections with people who um are quite well known for doing like restorative justice and stuff and they may um work with you to reach out to Tracy and see if she meet you. They are um Val and Ray Donovan lost their son Chris in a brutal attack where he was killed on the way home. And they've just started doing so much work in his name. They they work with like the, some of the biggest killers, they contact people. Um it might be worth me trying to put you in contact with them because they may even be able to, you know, even get a letter to her and one back just to try and see if she would answer any of your questions. At least you would know then and not have to live with this like limbo of like, will she one day tell me or, you know, feeling like you might feel better kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good to do. Yeah. Uh, people have said that before that, um, like, um, is it like probation or, um, yeah. you can go through them and, um, yeah, it is something I'd, I'd be willing to try. I, I personally don't think she would ever respond back to me. Um, yeah, it does work for these people, like, they literally, because they've lost a son themselves, they'd be so good with you. And they would obviously just go to her and be like, you know, could you even answer three questions? They would just try and meet her in the middle. And it might be something that she, if 
reached out to in the right way where she didn't feel like she was going to be attacked or it was going to go through the media it might be something that one day she will agree to if you feel like that would help you yeah i I think i I mean as well i think i've had people message me on here saying that they know her that they still talk to her and you know she probably knows about this so who knows I, i don't i don't hold any hope with it though Okay. Well, about did, I always wanted to ask if how your nan feels about the fact. Hey, Miss J, about how your nan feels about the fact that your that she held Tracy Andrews' hand while they were appealing for your dad's killer when all along it was her hands that had taken your dad's life. Um, it's not something I've really asked my nan. Um, yeah. but I just know that obviously it, it it's destroyed my nan. And it's destroyed my granddad and my auntie as well. Um, my nan kind of wanted to believe that my dad died in the arms of his lover, not no. by them. Um, so my nan's, my nan's like, you know, she's one of these where, you know, she tries to see the good in everybody. Um, and she wanted, she wanted um, to believe that, you know, she was this good person and that that wasn't the case but yeah um yeah has anyone else got any more questions for danny at all um can everyone please um do me a favor and go give danny a follow because if she's starting to put more videos out i'd really like to just get more support for her and then when she decides what she wants to do and if she wants to do anything in lee's name we'll already be following her to find that out because that would be amazing yeah lee's mum wrote a brilliant book um, called Pure Evil, I believe it's called, isn't it? Yeah, this is it. This, yeah, this book is amazing. I've read, I read this years ago, man. Um, and it is really good if you want to know the ins and outs of the case. And obviously, you've heard Danny's side now, and then you'll get to hear Lee's mum's side as well. Um, I think it's really good for people who suffer as well because his mum picked up on loads of the red flags and kind of realised things were not really great, but she was trying to support her son. Somebody asked if I'd ever had, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna come in in a minute and I'll sort it for you, okay? <laughs> Drama over YouTube. Um have I ever had counselling? I'm I'm waiting. It's something that I've recently looked into. Um counselling and um bereavement counselling. So I'm I've filled out my, my forms and stuff and I'm just waiting for um them to get back to me yeah i'm glad that like it takes yeah. forever it's really annoying especially when she got all that like cosmetic surgery so she can move on after she come out a killer but you have to wait on a wish like on a list when you when you want to grieve your dad it's so heartbreaking and i've actually like had people message me on here as well that the same thing has happened to them like they're a child like a daughter it happened to her as she was older um and her dad was murdered by his girlfriend um you know and she she messaged me and you know it was nice to have like somebody that understood my um you know the same way i felt so yeah apart from all the the shitty comments that i've had um every every comment every message you know it's all been it's been like it's been overwhelming it's you know it's so nice that people still remember and um you know say all these lovely things and you know people that knew him people that got on his bus or um you know it's it's better you know it's outdone all the the few negative comments that i've had so apparently i'm on um somebody said yesterday i commented on one of my videos um that some people talk about some um some bizarre um facts just to um earn a few quid um, I, I i'm surprised to say it to you but i get that all the time like you're doing this for clout yeah. and it's like i do true crime videos all day long like literally to get awareness like i don't need clout like i'm doing okay as i am um, someone said i said when you find my few quid i said please let me know so i can claim it <laughs> <laughs> when you ask how she feels about people talking and remembering about your dad do you like is it is it like is it healing for you or is it something like sometimes when you're caught off guard you're like i just i don't want to hear it today or um it's nice to obviously keep his memory alive um and it's nice that people have their memories or you know 
or even just to ask me how I am or how I feel or you know I don't I don't mind speaking about it um it's just when like I get like um people just write like find me on Facebook and Instagram and you know ask me if I want to do a story or they've got they're from a TV production company and you know they're making this documentary and do I want to take part um and then like at Christmas I think it was just before Christmas there was um do you know who is it Colin Sutter? Yeah. yeah. He made um, a documentary called The Real Manhunter. Yeah. And yeah. my dad's case was one of them. Like it was a new, it was a new, um, you know, it was new. It had like the detective and stuff from um, back when it happened. Yeah. Um, and I, we wasn't, we wasn't made aware that that was going to be show. Um, so at the time I had like, I put my TV on and I went onto the TV guide and because I had Sky, it was showing like what was on next and like Tracy's face was there like yeah. staring back at me. So it was a bit like, oh God. And then yeah. you, feel like you have to watch it then because like it's something that's not been shown before. Yeah. So. Yeah. One thing, one last thing I wanted to ask you was, do you think that it was a breakup violence killing like your dad was leaving her that night and he had finally told her and she couldn't bear to have him with anyone else. Yeah, yeah, Rada, hundred percent. Can you tell Auntie to get me on PC to watch YouTube? Okay. We have the same arguments all day long in my house. <laughs> yeah, Rada, I, I do believe that he was um, he was leaving her, and I think it was a case of if I can't have you, no one will. Yeah. Um. Yeah, she couldn't live with him, and I don't think she could live without him. Yeah. 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 So, that's the impression I got was kind of like he'd said in the pub, like, I am not doing this anymore. Like, I can't, especially after the, like, the, the abortion and everything and the fake story, like he'd just had enough. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming on. I literally, I'd love to stay in contact with you. I'd love to be able to do something um, like a whole week long or maybe covering cases to do with male uh, victims of domestic abuse. And maybe have you come on if you if you feel like it's something you'd want to do in your dad's name. If it's too much, obviously let me know. But I just thought having your perspective as well, and it might give you some um, some chance to kind of get some awareness on here as well and talk about your dad a bit. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, Danielle. You're welcome.